Hello everyone. I hope you all are safe in these critical times. I'm going to present uh, our research on the role of battery energy storage in decarbonization of distributed power systems. As all of you know, the battery energy storage market is growing worldwide and it had a record year in 2019 at 4.1 gigawatts, 8.3 gigawatt hours. Uh, it is projected to reach uh, 15 gigawatt and 41 gigawatt hours by uh, 2024. From 2013 to 2018, we had average 74% compound annual growth. Uh, these numbers are similar to United States. It had a market growth by 2000, uh, by 27% in 2017 and also 80% uh, growth in 2018. So these numbers show how important the battery energy storage is in uh, power system applications. Uh, let's see how power system is going to evolve in future. Traditionally, power system configuration is what you see in the left hand side. Uh, the thermal power units uh, were generating the electricity, giving it to transmission lines, and it was distributed in distribu distribution systems. What uh, we see in now, and it's going to be more important in future, is what you see in the right-hand side. We will have smaller portions of thermal power plants, and it will be replaced by grid-scale uh, renewable energy resources and energy storage systems. And also we will see bi-directional power flow uh, in distribution systems. Uh, we also uh, will see uh, concept of uh, sustainable neighborhoods. Each of these smaller circles that you see uh, are uh, smaller DERs that are going to play important role uh, in future. We also uh, will have uh, increased rate of uh, demand because of the electrification uh, that will happen in future. So in this power system, uh, we are going to focus on one of those smaller uh, circles uh, and we are going to investigate how the renewable energy and energy storage systems will play a role in a sustainable neighborhood concept. For this system, we have wind energy, solar PV, and also a small uh, thermal unit as the generation technologies. We also have the battery as energy storage system. And uh, with connection to the grid, all of these together will serve a certain load. Our focus will be mostly on modeling the battery energy storage. Uh, and we will see how the uh, model complexity can change the optimal solutions. So. In this problem, we want to minimize the investment and operational cost, which is subject to energy balance, generation units, limitations, and battery model. We will optimize the battery power and energy separately, and also we will investigate several scenarios in 2020 and 2050, uh, including carbon emission constraints, on-grid and off-grid scenarios, and also battery investment cost projections. So in this problem, we have the objective function to minimize the total cost, which includes the uh, costs of generation technologies and also costs of the battery. And also we have the load curtailment cost and uh, cost of purchase electricity from the grid. This objective function, it has many constraints, including energy balance constraint, generation units operational constraints and battery constraints. We will go into the details of the battery constraints as it is the main focus of this work. So uh, traditionally, uh, energy storage system is modeled as uh, constant efficiency, constant maximum power and no degradation in the literature, as you see in the black line in this graph. But in reality, we know that battery uh, has uh, different uh, efficiencies in different uh, state of charges and also maximum power uh, changes, maximum cycle, cycleable power changes in different state of charges. So we use piecewise linearization method to incorporate these curves into a linear model. And also we use binary variables to select different CO2 uh, uh, state of charge curves. So uh, in general, our uh, uh, 
model is a mixed integer linear and uh, linear programming formulation. To incorporate the degradation into our model, we set the uh, cyclable capacity of the battery in day one equal to the invested uh, uh, battery capacity. Uh, and then we update the uh, battery capacity in daily basis based on the degradation that happens in the battery. For degradation, we have considered that uh, we have both the cycling and calendar degradation and based on the experimental studies on battery we uh, concluded that the uh, total degradation in the battery is sum of cycle and calendar degradations. We define the parameter w to uh, account for the portion of cycle degradation and also calendar degradation in total degradations. So we calculate the degradation on a daily basis, and then we update the uh, energy capacity of battery uh, in, in daily basis to see how much energy we can charge or discharge uh, from the battery. To include the impact of degradation in objective function, we assume that the degradation penalty is equal to the investment cost of battery. So we calculate the capacity fade and we scale it up uh, to uh, scale it up using end of life criteria and lifetime of the battery and use that uh, capacity uh, and also the investment cost of battery as uh, the degradation penalty in objective function. We also have a constraint to control the carbon emissions. Carbon emissions of course come from the thermal power plant and also the electricity purchased from the grid. So having all these uh, modeling details, we uh, consider uh, several case scenarios. For those case scenarios, we have inputs and assumptions. We have considered the hypothetical site in Italy and low than the head market price data are obtained from NSOE. The solar and wind availabilities are obtained from Renewables Ninja, which is a website providing uh, wind and solar availabilities uh, for different locations. Uh, we also scaled up the data to match to proje uh, projected average values from asset project of uh, European Union. The main inputs are highlighted in these uh, tables. In a smaller table, you see that from 2020 to 2050, we have increase in solar and wind availability. Also, there is a difference between carbon emissions from uh, the electricity from grid and also the thermal power plant we have used. Also, from 2020 to 2050, we expect a change in the investment cost of different generation technologies. For PV, wind, and battery, this change is uh, um, more uh, significant uh, compared to the thermal power plant. We also expect to have uh, improved cycle life and lifetime of battery towards 2050. Having all of these uh, inputs and assumptions, first we investigate the uh, battery model complexities impact on the optimal solutions. So we have defined four different models. Model one is the basic model, and we have used it as the benchmark. This is the model with constant efficiency and constant maximum powers uh, with no degradation. This is the model that is used in literature. Model two incorporates the dynamic efficiency and power limits. Model three is the basic model with added degradation model. And model four, which is the most uh, uh, complete model, has the uh, dynamic efficiency and maximum powers, and also the degradation model. Comparing these models in terms of complexity, you can see in the smaller table uh, the number of variables uh, for uh, optimization problem. The model four is the most complex model, and then model two comes next, and model three, and then model one. But let's see how the optimal results change for, for these models. If you look at the uh, highlighted values in terms of installed capacity, model one and two have similar results. 
and also model three and four have very similar results. However, the model one and two values are different than model three and four, and the only difference in these uh, groups is the degradation. So we can conclude that the impact of dynamic efficiency and power limits uh, are, is not uh, that significant, but degradation has substantial impact on changing the optimal solution. So uh, having all these results, we can conclude that model three is uh, the trade-off between complexity and accuracy. It provides uh, more accurate results while it is not uh, computationally expensive. Using model three, we have defined several scenarios for uh, different years in 2020. First scenario is to investigate the impact of uh, CO2 emission constraints on the results. When we don't have any CO2 emission constraint, the major portion of installed capacity is a uh, thermal power plant and with the smaller uh, installation of uh, PV and battery, but when we add uh, stricter CO2 emissions to, to the problem, we see investments in PV and wind and battery. Of course, uh, it increases the total cost of system by 6, 19, and 45 percent for uh, 75, 50, and 20 percent CO2 emissions. It is also possible to uh, achieves zero emission system with these settings, but it is much more expensive than achieving, for example, 75% decarbonization. In these results, the CO2 intensity, if we don't have any carbon constraints, will be 489 uh, grams per kilowatt hour. The next uh, scenario is to investigate the impact of grid connection. We have considered the limited grid access of 100 kilowatts. We have uh, provided hourly energy price for 2018. And also we have added the fixed capacity cost of uh, the grid. So looking at the results, we, we see that uh, first, the grid uh, connection and purchase from uh, grid replaces the uh, thermal power plant and it does not change the investment in uh, PV, wind and battery significantly. And second, uh, although adding the grid connection decreases the system costs, uh, uh, but it's not very significant. So the total system cost will go down 2% with uh, on-grid mode. Well, in 2050 also we had a scenario. Uh, we considered the uh, different uh, battery uh, investment cost projections for 2050 from uh, NREL report. We have three uh, price uh, cost categories for battery, low, medium, high uh, pr uh, costs for battery, and we compare all those results to no battery case. When we don't have any battery in the system, we have only thermal unit, PV, and wind. In that case, the electricity cost will be almost 10 cents per kilowatt hour, and CO2 intensity will be 164. However, when we add battery to the system, uh, we see that the system cost uh, goes down, and system emissions also go down. The share of renewables when we don't have battery is 66%, which is high. But when we add the battery to system, we reach to up to 80% uh, percent, uh, renewables share in, in uh, providing, in supplying the load. Also, we investigated the zero emission system in 2050. In that case, we only have PV, uh, wind, and, and battery. We realized that the system is feasible. feasible. However, it increases the cost of serving the load and the total electricity uh, cost goes up when we eliminate the thermal unit from the, from the uh, investment options. This result shows uh, hourly dispatch for, for the case in 2050. 
it's obvious that when we don't have battery, this uh, load is being served by PV, wind, and sometimes with uh, thermal unit when there is a scarcity of these resources. However, when we add the battery to the system, battery is being charged by wind and PV uh, during the day and is being discharged to grid later in the evening and uh, early in the morning. So uh, studying all these uh, scenarios, we have uh, some conclusions. First, we realize that the uh, battery uh, modeling complexity and incorporating the battery modeling details into the model is very important. However, dynamic efficiencies and power limits uh, didn't change the optimal solutions much while adding uh, substantial computational uh, cost. But degradation has significant impact on the optimal solutions. In 2050, in 2020 results, we uh, uh, saw that the battery is not favorable in general unless we have a strict CO2 emissions and of course it increases the electricity cost. Achieving 100% uh, renewable system in 2020 is uh, possible but it significantly uh, increases the system cost and uh, it goes uh, more than 200% increase in, in the cost. Limited grid access decreases the total energy cost, but it is not significant. It's around 2%. In 2020, in 2050 assumptions also, we saw that uh, energy cost goes down with battery. When battery is added to the system, we can expect higher rates of uh, renewable energy and also uh, uh, increase the decarbonization levels. Zero emission system also is possible in 2050, uh, but uh, it increases the cost at 37 to 66 percent, depending on the projected investment cost of the battery. Of course, all of the numerical results we present here are obtained under given inputs and assumptions, and the results should be uh, interpreted accordingly. These are uh, some of the uh, references we have used in this study. And lastly, we want to thank uh, Paul A. Stevens and Michael R. Harper from uh, ExxonMobil for their useful inputs and also MIT uh, Energy Initiative. Thank you.